Right, I'm trying to imagine who who was there. There were quite a few of us in the room. It was fairly kind of fairly buzzy. There was a lot going on. Um, Mabel, obviously me. Ray was definitely there. M and E K maybe. Um, S G Lewis, no. I've never actually met him in real life, but uh, but we will we will soon. I hope. Um, so it was it was a good vibe on the day, which is important. In terms of the recording process, Mabel sings through a, a Brauner Fantera microphone, uh, always pretty much since day one with me. Um, and we use a Neve 1073 preamp, uh, which uh, the EQ is flat, um, except for a high pass. I'll always high pass at the lowest amount, and on the Neve, I think it's 50 hertz, um, just to keep things clean uh, in the audio world. Um, and then we'll go through an 1176, preferably a, like a Yuri vintage 1176, but the newer ones are good as well. Uh, and then that comes into Pro Tools, and I record her onto this one track here, and I'll explain this in a minute. Um, everything exists on this one track and then I copy it and drag it to different locations in the session depending on where I want it. Um, be good to explain actually this song there's a lot going on here in my session um, but I would have started with a template which essentially would be everything you see here without like without any audio in it it would be blank like that and I would pull in an instrumental from S.G. Lewis, for example. Uh, it would be this. First thing I'd do is I'd set the, the level of it, and I'd, set the, I'd clip gain the level of it up or down so that it just sits nicely around the click track um, up here. Let me just play. I've already kind of click gained it down to minus 10, so it should sound pretty good. Yeah. And the reason for it being the same level as the click just means that all of the other stuff that's in the template is going to also kind of come out at the right kind of level. Um, the next thing I would do, it's already on the grid, the next thing I would do is find the tempo, so I'd probably pull up. Uh, the transport, play it, and then just tap tempo here. And I mean, we all know it's one, one, two, five, but I'd do that. And then if I knew the structure of the song or if I had a, like a guide vocal or an acapella, I would drop in these markers up here, verse, chorus, pre, if there is one. Um, so we know what's going on, and then I would figure out the key of the song, which you could use if you wanted to. You could use this little plugin from Antares called Auto Key, uh, but I tend not to do that. I kind of just have a keyboard with me usually. I'll hit play. <laughs> it's probably the key, and then uh, it's going to be B minor because of that. And then I set auto-tune. I have loads of tracks down here, all with auto-tune on, and all of them uh, are grouped. There's, a, there's a, a group that links that first insert slot, so I can pull up one of them. Um, I can pull up one of them, and if we see up here, the settings will change on, on all of them. So I'd, I'd set that up. It's already done, B minor. Ah, yeah, but there's a magic, hold on, in the chorus, there's an extra note on there, which would be that, B flat. So I would have put that on there. I also use a, a talkback mic that I route through Pro Tools, and that could be just like an SM7 or an SM58. Um, and I run that through my uh, UAD Arrow interface uh, straight to the headphones, and I use this little plugin called Mutomatic, which is it's banging, just mutes when it's stopped. Uh, sorry, mutes when you press play, 
and then unmutes when you stop. And that means that I have like a direct line of communication to the artist. Um, if I wanted to, I could whack some effects on there. I could put auto-tune on or some, some reverb, which would be irresponsible and, and just stupid. But I could if I wanted to. The, the point is, is having um, like kind of seamless direct communication with the artist. Um, and I also wear the same headphones as the artist and we listen to the exact same uh, mix. And I do that from the get go. Sure, I might take them off and listen to stuff on speakers, but for the most part, I've got the headphones on and I'm in the artist's head and I'm, I'm kind of mixing it for them really um, from the get go. Uh, and then in terms of recording, I have a bit of a workflow in this session, which um, I've been doing for a while, which is a little bit antiquated perhaps, but it works for me. I'll try and explain this. I have one record track here, um, which Mabel sings through. And depending on what we're doing, maybe it has a bit of auto-tune on, um, but usually it just has some kind of broad settings. It's got a high pass, a bit of an EQ boost there at three and a half K. Pensado vocal, if if you know, you know. And then uh, CLA 76, just to kind of get things, get things happening. And I hit that compressor pretty hard, to be honest. It's on a pretty fast release, eight to one, which is unusual, but um, hit it pretty hard and it sounds good usually in the headphones. And I record to that. Let me show you if I set up a little bit here with some pre-roll. <laughs> and when we've done a line, I this usually happens pretty quickly. I, I have that selected. I copy the take, make a new playlist. And then I'd probably hit record again and say, let's try it again. And while it's recording, I would then take what I copied, paste it, paste it down here and then give it a little color. Uh, so it kind of, it happens pretty quickly. And I do that without thinking while also listening and then kind of giving a little bit of direction in between each take. Let me show you. I have to imagine that we're recording something that right now. Um, and I use this pre-roll here, which is helps. <laughs> Nails shine like Christmas, heels on six inches. And maybe I'd say, hey, we should do that again, but maybe not quite as angry. <laughs> Nails shine like Christmas, heels on six inches. Yeah, go again. <laughs> Nails shine like Christmas. One more time. <laughs> Nails shine like Christmas. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, it's a lot of clicking. Which, which you would think maybe slows you down, but I've been doing it for so long that it's kind of just second nature to me. It allows me to chuck all of these takes down here, almost like a bit of a scrapbook, um, and have it very kind of visual on the, on the screen in front of me, while also talking to the artist, doing a bit of a comp at the same time. I might, let's say, hold on, let's say we chuck a few of these down here. I could, if I wanted to, just region group them, mute them, and give them a name. And I could say these are slightly softer options. And then that's just a note for me. I know those are slightly softer options. Um, and then also just while we're recording, I, I can see, like if I'm looking for something with a good k sound, I know I've got one there and I can start kind of building a comp on the fly as we record. This would, these would be my comp tracks up here, probably. Um, just grabbing little, little bits as we go. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it happens pretty fast. <laughs> um, and the point being to then when we get to the end of the verse to have a rough comp up there. Hold on, let me do a, a rough looking comp. It's, it would probably be quite large sections like this, maybe with the odd thing kind of spliced on the end, like of that actually. That's a nice color. So 
so that when we reach the end of the verse, we're like, hey, yeah, we know what we've got here. It's, it feels good. The next stage then, if, if we've done like a couple of bits of the song, maybe we've done the whole song, um, Mabel might take a break, maybe she should get some lunch. Um, and then I might also grab lunch, but I'm also usually pretty keen to just dig into the comp a little bit um, and just to see what's there. I, I kind of know in my head that we've got it, um, but I want to I wanna dig in and, and get something sounding really good so that she can hear it with fresh ears in like 20 minutes or so. Um, so that's my blind rough comp that I just did there, but I suspect if I go into this take, uh, this track here, I will have also just packed all of these takes down here into this playlist. So then I can move to the Pro Tools kind of, whatever it's called, like quick swipe comping thing. Um, I can see there that this track looks to me like my rough comp. It's quite broad sections, there's there's no real crossfades or anything. And then it looks like I went over the top of that comping into that with a few things. It might be fun just to listen to might be fun just to listen to a few takes actually and do a new comp. Um, let's do this. And I'll show you a couple of bits. If that was the the starting point. Let's just comp the first few lines a little bit and see what we've got. It's got some doubles playing, which I'm going to mute. Let's just look through these. I love, hold on, I love the verb on shine like. Nail shine like Christmas. I'll have that. Christmas. And then I just want a fun Christmas. And sometimes I sort of know that the stuff towards the end of what we recorded down here, these latter takes are going to be a little bit more refined. Sometimes when I'm looking for something a bit kind of more reckless and, and edgy, then I'm going to dip into these ones at the top because I know they might have some imperfections that'll be fun. Christmas. That's too angry. Christmas. Nah. Christmas. 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 I'll do. That's slightly ahead of the beat, so I might just move it. Nail shine like Christmas. Heels on six inches. Waist cinch move glare fit. You can't have this. You can't hit this. I got a new. You kind of get the gist. Um, and then once we end up with. Let's just go back to this other track. Once we end up with my refined comp, what are we talking about? 21, there it is. Then I would, so we've got auto tune on this whole time. I'd probably pop it into Melodyne um, and tweak it a little bit. And the things I'm going to be doing in Melodyne would be uh, kind of smoothing it out a little bit, a bit of pitch correction, but then also just sort of smoothing note bends and a little bit of timing as well. Um, I wonder if we if we pop open this Melodyne, we should be able to get, I should be in there from when I did it. Yeah, nice. Let's have a listen. Nail shine like Christmas, heels on six inches, waist cinch, move glare fit, you can't have this, you can't hit this, I got a new man in my business, and he all about his business, and his name ain't none of your business. Oh, oh, oh. And I've got on so if I just take, select all of that, and restore it. Oh yeah, there we go, you can see, and I probably did a bit of timing as well, let's restore that. I have a feeling here, hold on, let me listen to this first line of the second half of the first verse. There's an example of something I think Mabel sung the words pin up girl, all one note. Pin, pin up girl! Let's just check the takes. Pin up girl on that, yeah. pin up girl, pin up girl, pin up girl on that. Yeah, 
and I did something naughty here. Just have a listen to that in relation to the next line. I have a feeling I changed the first note of pin up. Hold on, if we go back. There, I reckon that I did. Pin up, pin up, pin, pin up, I think. Because then on the next line, we have to say, say so. It's just a bit of symmetry there, which I think we missed when we were recording. All right, and then probably while we were doing the lead, we might have stopped off along the way and done a few background vocals, or we would have done the lead and then come back and done background vocals. There's no real rule uh, or approach to it. Um, I suspect we probably put the lead down and then maybe just started to double it. If we have a look here, just if we solo these up, I have some double tracks from the demo which we kept because they were a little bit rough but in, in a really cool way. Have a listen to these. I've also got a, like a fat pumping side chain on there which is pretty cool and Ray is in there as well. Yeah, wicked. We definitely kept that. Um, and then we would put some like slightly tidier doubles over the top. Let them know, oh baby, let them know, cause they can run their mouth, but I'ma stand and pose for you. Let them Looks like I've melodyned those, um, just by the fact that autotune is deactivated, melodyne is deactivated. And then what's this? Let them know, let them know. That's some just some more aggy doubles i've done some elastic audio here as well i suspect <laughs> that's uh, purists would hate this hold on it looks like if we solo up this track let them know and take the altar boy off let them know it looks like i've pitched that word let down like, kind of brutally just with elastic audio let's put it back to what it was let them know that's why that's mad, we must have just sung it that way and then when I was kind of going through the BVs I couldn't be bothered to open Melodyne so I just elastic audio did to the right note. Let them know. Same here, perhaps as well. Let them know. Yeah, what was it before? Let them know. Yeah. I mean it wasn't, it was in between notes but it auto tune was catching wrong. So we get that. Let them know. And I must have wanted just a bit more kind of texture to it so I put Alter Boy on a little bit of a formant shift on a couple of those and then it sounds like I've got quite a grungy room reverb on there. Yep. Let them know. Check this out. Let you put like Valhalla room, any of these room reverbs, if you have like a really short pre-delay and decay, um, you get this really trashy reverb. Let That was my party trick for a little bit. I was using that on everything. Uh, don't think I do that as much anymore, but I should bring it back 100%. Uh, and then we should check these out because when I pulled this up earlier, I, I was like, um, I don't remember doing this, but it's kind of fun. A little bit more altar boy stuff. This is in the middle of the verse. In your business. Oh, oh, oh. If we meet the lead, few layers to this we have which I don't know if we did this while recording or, or whether I did this after the fact it looks like I've just formatted it again to sound a bit weird that was before so afterwards it sounds kind of fun it just makes it more of a moment doesn't it it's, it's less because if it if it was normal uh, it might just sound a bit boring There's also two extra things in there. There's this naughty little harmony. I don't know if I melodyned that or I think I melodyned that. Check this out. Together with 
see on to buy. Yeah, vibey. And then hold on, final piece of the pie. I have all these little green tracks up here, which I call my sort of bag of tricks, but they're just, uh, I mean, on a stem, I would call them vocal effects. Um, because it's lots of little kind of whiz bangs and things, uh, and this here is just a reverb push. With a good old, good old dirty snare preset. Looks like I've got it. Oh, I've got a high octave in there. Yeah, I mean, the subtlety of it gets lost a little bit, but the cumulative effect of all of that just added texture and his name ain't her neo business oh, oh, oh. pin up girl on that poster Say wasting smoke left it you can't have this you can't hit this so then once we've got once we've got the lead vocals the bvs in and they're all i've started to spice them up a little bit with these um with little special effects and stuff i'm going to start working on the mix i may have already started this earlier on, I certainly would have begun the session with um, some preset kind of Mabel vocal chain settings. Um, and I run all of my vocals on these little mono audio tracks here with auto-tune and they all route to uh, like kind of vocal master buses up here and I have them separated out onto different sections of the song. Let's just look at the first verse for example. Um, we've got... the SSL EQ. I suspect a lot of this, hold on, let's just go through. We've got the SSL Pensada vocal, which um, which we all should know about. It looks like I'm hitting, I'm hitting two compressors pretty hard. Let's just watch it. Now shine like Christmas, heels on six inches, waist inch more glass that you can't have. Yeah, that's pretty aggressive. And then a couple of DS's. My thinking with this, let me just pull up the Mabel preset that I have here. Um, yeah. I would have started the session with, where are we? Right, with that. Uh, just skipping the reverbs for a sec, it would have been this kind of basic SSL setting where I'm I'm boosting everything, which seems ridiculous, but um, it works. <laughs> I kind of love boosting everything straight into kind of a slamming 1176. Have a listen to that. This would be the starting point. Nails shine like Christmas. Heels on six inches. Waist in smooth glare fit you. And then that's pretty hard. compressed pretty hard. I don't know why I would have put this the CLA 3A on there, but I know that I then it's a bit kind of muddy at this point. But I don't want to start carving out the mud here on the SSL because I like the way the 1176 grabs that low mid range. You need to give it that energy really for it to react. Um, so I would pop on a Q3 probably and then do a little bit of tidying up. Nails shine like Christmas. Heels on six inches, waist inch smooth glare fit. You can't have this, you can't hit this. I got it. Nails shine like Christmas. Heels on six inches, waist inch smooth glare fit. You can't have this, you can't hit this. Is that pretty good to me? I would love to then look at this and see if that's what I did. Ha, <laughs> nice. Pretty close. <laughs> Interesting. All right. And then. And then it looks like I've added a bunch more kind of fruity bits. I've got air distortion on here, which is pretty aggressive plugin. Um, but I noticed earlier when I pulled this up, I'm automating it. It's like the verse, the song starts and it's kind of crunchy and then it backs off a little bit. Uh, have a look at that when I play it, but then also have a look at this high pass here in Pro Q. Looks like I ride that up at the end for some reason 
Nails shine like Christmas, heels on six inches, waist in smook, left fit. You can't have this, you can't hit this. I got a new man in my business, and he all about his business, and his name ain't none of your business. Oh, oh, oh. Pin up girl on that poster. And it backs off a little bit, have see what's going on here. New man in my business, and he all about his business, and his name ain't none of your business. Oh, oh. That's pretty subtle, but I suspect, I su suspect I was probably just trying to do like a little bit of a filter just so that it drops again on that. Oh, oh, oh. Um, and then I've got loads of other sort of party tricks going on up, up here. I'm a big fan of like a reverb cut. Um, so it looks like I've got this echo. The names up here sort of don't mean anything. They're they used to be, for example, this was a reverb, it used to be an impulse of the fat plate on a lexicon, and then I changed it a long time ago to Valhalla, I think, um, and just never changed the name. Let's just jump through these settings. We've got fat plate or not fat plate on the verse, and it looks like, yeah, I'm using Nicky Romero for a bit of uh, side chaining. Have a listen to this. Nails shine like Christmas, heels on six inches, waist inch, smooth, left fit, you can't have this, you can't hit this. It's pretty subtle actually. That's, uh, you're not gonna hear that. It's like I'm going hard on the, um, on the doubling just by the sounds of it. Nails shine like Christmas. <laughs> That's pretty wild. And then I've got a lot going on here on this, but this only comes in for the chorus by the looks of it. Let's have a look. That is definitely not something that lives in my in my preset template, that's something I have spent time on by the looks of it. Got Nicky Romero doing a bit of pump, a bit of clean up there with the EQ. That side chaining from the vocal by the looks of it. Pretty naughty. <laughs> Alright, and then I would start to pile on just a few sort of special effects, little bits of ear candy. One which is most kind of noticeable to me when I hear the track is up here, this little dotted echo on um, on Mabel's laugh. I've split that out on two tracks. We've got um, just a kind of a clean one here. <laughs> but then underneath, I've got this cheeky little um, with a cut on the end by the looks of it. <laughs> Which I'm into, and I'm glad it made the record. If I mute that, it's just kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, needs to laugh. <laughs> and there's a few bits like that. Um, what's this? These, again, all have it's a it's it, the kind of preset things on there that I then go in and manipulate like I know this one wide throw effects has like a ping pong thing going on with primal tap um, and then a, a reverb I'm also a big fan of slamming things like effects through L1 I suspect that's probably hitting pretty hard <laughs> And the point with L1 there is just to bring the level of everything up loads. Um, so that lives with the ad-libs. And then we should look at, we should check out this bridge section because this is kind of fun. If I just mute the instrumental, there's a lot going on here. We had a bit of fun. Baby, oh, you're dead. All my girls for the baseline. Ponytail to the waistline. Right. Throw it back, baby, take time. Money talks and I make my. All my girls for the baseline. Ponytail to the baseline. Throw it back, baby, take time. Money talks and I make my. 
this hot Throw it back, baby, take time Money talks and I make my All my girls for the baseline Ponytail to the baseline Throw it back, baby, take time Money talks and I make my I had a little rummage through this earlier Just to remind myself what we did There's some ad-libs here that we didn't use um, Which I mean, they're a bit uh, surplus really, there's a lot going on, but check these out. Sick. <laughs>